Right now, I'm going to show you how to blur the background in a photo in Photoshop. Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com. Let's get started. So here's an image that I grabbed from Adobe Stock. And what I'm going to do is create a realistic blur, but it's going to be a little different than some of the blurs you've seen before. I'm going to blur the foreground and the background. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make a selection around our couple. The nice thing about the blur, we don't have to worry about trying to cut everything around the bottom because this is going to be sharp. We only have to worry about the areas that are kind of sticking up out of the areas that will be blurry. So keep that in mind. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the layer. Control J. And the reason for that is because I want to work with a layer mask. So now we're going to go down and just choose either the object selection or the quick selection tool. Either of these will do the job uh, because what they will do is they will activate select subject. So let's click select subject and we'll get a selection around them. Now, if you're using an earlier version of Photoshop and you don't have that feature available, just use the quick selection tool and draw around to do that. Now, what I'm going to do though is I'm going to refine the selection. I'm going to use the object selection tool. Just look at this little area here. We got that should not be selected. So I'm going to hold the Alt or the Option key and just click around there. Once again, if you are using the quick selection tool, Alt or Option key, it will work exactly the same. So that's great. The good thing about this is we don't need a perfect selection. We just want a, a good enough selection and you'll see why. Okay, let's choose select and mask so we can go in and clean up the selection a little bit. I'm zooming in because what we want to do is make sure that we've got a pretty decent job around here. You know, we don't want to lose her nose and different things like that. So grab this little feathery tool here. And the trick to this is to make sure it's small. Don't be lazy. Um, use it small and use it around these edges and you're going to get really good edges. Now we don't have to be perfect with this. We just want to make sure that we don't lose noses and important things like that. So now we can just go to selection, click OK. Control zero will show us the whole photo and we can see, all right, we've got our selection there. Great. Let's add a layer mask. With that selection active, click add a layer mask and you can see the mask. Now you're not going to see the result unless I hide the background. There we go. We've got our cutout. That's perfect for what we want. So I'm just going to turn it back on. I'm going to control J and I'm going to create another copy just so I can show you the before and after later. And I'm just going to hide that. All right. There's another thing we need to do because if I just blur this, watch what happens. I'm going to zoom in here and I choose the filter blur, choose the Gaussian blur, which is not what we're going to do, but see how we get these edges, these halos. We don't want those edges that just says amateur. We don't want that. So what we're going to do is load the selection from the mask that we created. Control click on that selection. And now we see the selection around the people. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we want to hide the top so we can see what's going on. Let's expand the selection, make it a little bit bigger. So we're going to choose select, modify, expand. And three, that'll work. Click OK. And now what we want to do is fill this with content or where fill shift delete or shift backspace on windows brings up our fill dialog box content aware click OK. Fills it up control D turns it off. Now this doesn't have to be perfect. What we want to do is just hide those edges. So when we blur, we get the proper colors and we're not getting those uh, weird edges, those halos showing. So let's show the top layer. Now we're going to go down the bottom. We're going to do something special with this blur. So let's choose filter blur, but we're not going to go to blur. We're going to go down to the blur gallery and we're going to use the tilt shift blur. This is going to enable me to apply a blur in the foreground and the background. The way this tool works is see this little ring here. The area between these two, these two pins is where everything's going to be sharp and then everything is going to fall off into blur on those other sides. So we can click anywhere between these two dots and we can drag this. What you want to do is position this on the ground. This is the grounding part because we don't want to blur here. This is where everything should be in focus. Now notice it's looking nice in the background. 
uh, versus the people because we've got that new layer where the people are not blurred. Great. So what we want to do is let's set our background blur. Now the blur is going to happen between this line and this line. So let's determine how sharp do we want this in focus. So I want to create a slice of focus from about there. Let's bring it forward a little bit to about there. So this is the slice of focus. And now we're going to bring this down and notice how we can have it blur off very quickly or slowly. We can adjust the blur by just clicking in here. And I'm going to have a blur off. Let's have a look. Maybe a little bit quicker. Now let's go to the bottom. Scroll down. Notice we can't see the bottom part and that's because it's way down here. So let's bring that up. And as we do that, notice now we can have some blur going into that foreground. Now, if you want it more gentle, bring this up, pull this down, and it's not such an abrupt blur. So we can see how we're creating a much more creative blur than just blurring that background. Now it's going kind to of progressively, it looks a lot more natural. Now, what if you wanted to go further and maybe blur off to the side here as well? Well, here's a cool thing about working in the blur gallery. We can use more than one blur at once. So we're going to turn on the field blur. And let's click on field blur. Notice our tilt shift is still applied, but now we have this field blur, which enables us to blur everything, except obviously the layer on top, which is sharp. What we're going to do is we're going to move this off to the left. I want to blur this, but I want to have it sharp near our couple. Even though it doesn't look bad blurry, but I think it'll look better sharp. So what we're going to do is just hold down the control key. That would be the command key and double click. And that will create this nice sharp area. And notice now we can have this blur fall off to the sides as well, which is just giving us a little bit more. I'm going to click OK to apply this. And then if we look here, I'll show you the before and the after you can see we've got a very cool blur. Now there's one more thing I want to do that's really going to make this pop. It needs a little bit more work with the tones. So I'm going to select my top two layers, right click, choose convert to smart object. Now we can apply a camera raw adjustment non-destructively. Choose filter, camera raw, and because both those layers are in a smart object, the whole image is now going to work together. What I want to do is I want to open up these shadows just a little bit. Let's see a little bit more detail in our couple. There we go. That's better. I'm going to give the exposure just a little pop and it's starting to blow out the background so we can make up for that by pushing the highlights back. And if you wanted to tweak the colors a little bit, you could. I'm not going to do too much with the colors. I just want to make those tones pop a little bit more. Click OK to apply. Look at it before and after the smart object, the original image, the edited image. So I hope you enjoyed this little workflow. Um, let me know in the comments underneath if you found this useful and if you learned anything new. Also, let me know what you'd like to learn in future tutorials. And by the way, if you're new, welcome to the cafe. Great to have you with us. If you love these kind of Photoshop tutorials, hit the subscribe button and that way you won't miss any of my tutorials. Also turn on the notifications so you know when I upload a new video. So anyway guys, if you like this, smash the like button into dust. Don't forget to join us here on YouTube at Photoshop Cafe, 1 p.m. Pacific time for Live From Lockdown where we go live and edit your photos. Till next time, I'll see you at the cafe.